hey, Farhan, you should become a dick doctor. At that moment, my brain reformulated this statement into a decision. I am a dick doctor. I literally felt it in my veins. And what happened to me has now become the ultimate fake it till you make it story. The guy who had that first hunch was Yuri, my Belarusian friend and also my very first business partner. I'm sure he's doing amazing things. We were on the third floor of our apartment building. It was RSD Todd's apartment. He had gone to LA to teach a boot camp to those typical nerdy guys, you know, those virgins who pay $2,500 for one weekend of cold approach pickup training. It was past 2 a.m. Yuri and I had just finished our route walk in the parking lot of the Wynn Casino, adoring the Lamborghinis and Ferraris parked outside. We were thirsty. And uh, I don't mean water. And yes, if you haven't guessed it yet, we lived in Las Vegas. I was RSD Todd's assistant in charge of 50 students and 15 interns at Las Vegas Immersion. Now you can imagine, I was a newly minted PhD in neuroscience, picking up chicks at the top clubs in Vegas for an entire year. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> Back to the d doctor. Dude, I'm telling you, that decision I made on October 28, 2014, that feeling I got in the deepest part of my soul, it was like the universe was communicating directly to my human consciousness. I still get goosebumps when I think about it. I became a d doctor that day. I had no training in urology or endocrinology or sex therapy. In fact, I was still a virgin. I had spent an entire year picking up women, pulling them, bringing them to my bed, but I didn't f a single girl. I was literally the last guy on the planet who would qualify as a d doctor. I didn't even know how to use my dick, but it didn't matter because the feeling was so strong that it bypassed all logic and rational thinking. But this wasn't the first crazy decision I made. Even embarking on my PhD in neuroscience was shocking to my friends and family. You see, my undergraduate degree, and uh, by the way, I graduated with honors and magna cum laude was in computer science and engineering. I graduated at the top of my class. While I was doing my bachelor's, I interned at IBM for about a year and they offered me a very good salary and a permanent position after graduation. I said, no. Do you get it? I made the decision to reject IBM, whereas most of my fellow classmates would have killed for this offer. And as you will see again later, it's even more important to say no than it is to say yes. But why did I choose engineering in the first place? Well, it was the dot-com boom at the time, so rather than pursuing my childhood dream of being a neuroscientist, I submitted to what was in demand and learned how to code. And I was pretty good at it. But it that feeling wasn't there. And then in the summer of 2003, as I listened to the Wreath Lectures by Professor Ramachandran, I made the decision that I'm a neuroscientist. I had that feeling deep in my gut and my childhood dream had come to life. And remember, when you make a decision, obstacles become jokes. L let me give you some examples. When I uh, got into McGill University for grad school, it wasn't in the neuroscience department. I was in computer science. And I had also won the prestigious Tomlinson Fellowship. The school gives this award to one student per year. And despite this award from the computer science department, I spend the first semester trying to figure out how to transfer to neuroscience and find a brand new supervisor and forfeit the Tomlinson Fellowship. But there's more. The neuroscience department required that I do a bunch of prerequisites, like organic chemistry. If I would have let 
them run the show, I would have wasted an entire year taking these useless courses. So what did I do? I said no. Remember, the decision was already made. I wanted to study neuroscience, not organic chemistry. I ignored all the requirements and took the advanced neuroscience courses like a gangster, both in medical school and in the department of neurology. But how? I found a technical loophole in the online system which allowed me to register without the prerequisites. However, in reality, it was simply the universe conspiring to make my dreams come true. And I fully accepted the chaos. The courses I took were high level and difficult for most students. Despite this hardship, I immersed myself into the fear and anxiety of my ego. And then later I would realize that picking up chicks is even harder than getting a PhD. I still remember the Dean of Neurosurgery emailing me. She wrote, you've been taking advanced classes in our department without the basic prerequisites. I told her the honest truth. I didn't need those courses. Why? Because I already had straight A's in the advanced courses that that I had taken. Therefore, I was good. And even when my supervisor, Dr. Angel Alonso, died from a rare strain of bacterial meningitis, I could have victimized myself about how this death is so devastating and heartbreaking, but I didn't. Of course, I felt remorse for his wife and daughters. Besides, he was only 47. But I looked at the bright side. You see, I fully trusted the universe. And remember, I had already made the decision to be a neuroscientist inside. My inner vibration was in sync with the universal consciousness. My supervisor's death was a blessing because that enabled me to work with Dr. Christopher Pack, a Harvard-trained electrophysiologist. And during my PhD, I worked closely with Nobel Prize winners from Harvard, such as Dr. David Hubel. And I did amazing. Published a bunch of papers, won prestigious grants and research awards. And once again, I was top gun in the entire school. The outer frequency of the physical universe had caught up with my inner world. I had put out the wish to be a neuroscientist when I was six years old. Anytime one of my aunts or uncles would ask me, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? I painted a picture for them. Being in a laboratory surrounded by monkeys in cages, I had already visualized my future at six years old. And that's exactly how manifestation works. Once you become the person you want to be, every thought, action, and feeling resonate with that reality. The way you behave, the way you react, the way others look at you, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you look, look at yourself in the mirror. It's all a result of who you think you are, period. And it's not woo woo, it's pure science. But it was up to me to make that choice. And every man out there, including you, can make this choice of your dream life. But 99% of men hesitate. They have doubt. They want the dream, but refuse to make the choice to accept the decision because you're afraid. All I know is this. If I can do all those things, anyone can, including you. All right, let's continue. Two years before graduation, I realized something big. Academia is not what I thought it was. I was interested in doing experiments, teaching, reading papers, publishing papers, but not in writing grants and begging the f***ing government to give me money for research. And this begging is what most professors do most of the time. And an even bigger realization, I still felt empty inside. Despite receiving multiple offers to do my postdoc at Harvard Medical School and work with Dr. Michael Merzenich, the father of neuroplasticity, I felt that my deepest gift to humanity lies elsewhere, not in academia. So once again, I rejected those two offers from Harvard and the one from Dr. Merzenich. Hey, it was an easy decision. It's fun to say no when everyone thinks you're crazy. But why did I reject these? I felt that my sexual life, my romantic life was really lacking. I saw my fellow PhDs spending seven days in the lab, no social life, no sexual life. They were living like peasants, driving Honda Civics and living in studio apartments. I didn't want that life. And I had 
hadn't really pursued any women because I was religious. I didn't want to have sex before marriage. I was a good Muslim boy, you know? And then I fell in love with a girl. I courted her. I was the nice guy, a true gentleman, as Hollywood and Bollywood had taught me in the movies. And this time, I got rejected horribly. It was a real embarrassment, bro. It still provokes me a little bit, a little bit of resentment in me, but I've let it go. That rejection made me ask myself a question. And as I've taught you before in other videos, every great life, every great experience begins with a question. I asked my best buddy while he was dropping me home one night, hey man, how can I get a girl to like me? Is there some technique or algorithm I can follow? And what happened next basically created the next 12 years of my life. He reached into the back seat. There was a bunch of books. He uh, picked up one of them and handed it to me. It kind of looked like some holy book, like the Bible. And it was, as you probably guessed by now, The Game by Neil Strauss. So being the super nerd I was, I read The Game and all those other books by David D'Angelo, AKA Eben Pagan, and got a completely new perspective on female psychology. I learned that I could do cold approach to any girl I wished, like on the street or at the mall or even at the grocery store. And I could eventually make her my girlfriend. Wow, I felt chills, dude. I forgot about the other girl who had rejected me. And in that moment, literally two years before getting my PhD, I made a decision, a choice. I am a pickup artist or PUA. That feeling was so strong, man. Like I felt no embarrassment or ego. I was humble. I thought the intellectual academic science shit, I've already mastered it. This bucket is full, but the girl bucket, the love bucket, the sex bucket, all empty. And I was so happy. I felt that this was my ticket to fulfillment, fun, and enjoyment. I was ready to enter chaos again. The fears and the anxiety were a sign that I was doing something amazing. I still had to finish my PhD, which I did. In fact, I aced it. Publishing many papers and top journals and getting a lot of media attention for all of my scientific discoveries. With this PUA thing, I didn't know how I was gonna do it. I had no plan, but the pain of not being loved, the pain of sexual thirst and inadequacy was so deep and it didn't help that I was uh, intensely addicted to porn since the age of 12. It got so bad. I was drinking hard liquor every night, masturbating three times per day and watching the weirdest porn you can imagine. Feeling shame and guilt and worst of all, betrayal. I felt that I had betrayed myself. I let myself down. All that neuroscience, understanding how the brain works. It was useless when it came to peace and inner satisfaction. But remember, I was a big doctor and I chose the name, Doc Testosterone. I had to get myself checked for the first time in my life. My results came back, 376 nanograms per deciliter. That's the testosterone of an 82 year old man. But remember, it didn't matter. There was no additional pain. And at that point, I was numb. So I saw it as an opportunity to go all in, to figure out this thing, fix the low T and get the love life I deserve. So seven days after my doctoral dissertation, I flew to Vegas. I invested $1,500 for one month with RSD, Real Social Dynamics. The program was called Las Vegas Immersion. It was an immersive experience. We went to clubs seven nights a week, did day game in the streets, the grocery stores, the pharmacies and the malls, all cold approach pickup. The instructor was RSD Todd, great guy. He told me that I was his best assistant in 12 years of doing this. But how did I go from knowing nothing about women to becoming one of RSD's dating coaches? Again, it was because of a decision. Look, you might be wondering, how did I pay for all this? I had just finished a three-year master's degree and a seven-year PhD. My salary was 
despite all the grants and scholarships, I was $250,000 in debt, which included credit card debt. And I was paying $4,000 of interest per month and no savings at all, just a shit ton of debt. So how did I spend a year in Vegas? Again, a choice, a decision. I 1 million percent trust the universe. And I knew that I wanted this infinitely. So I consolidated all of my credit cards, got a 0% APR for 12 months and paid my year in Vegas by going deeper into credit card debt. Zero given. Just trust the damn universe. And here's how I became one of the coaches. The first weekend I was there in Vegas, I found out that Todd had an upcoming boot camp in San Diego. So I approached him during one of our trainings. Hey man, can I assist you during the San Diego boot camp? My plan was to show Todd that I can help and maybe he would make me an official coach one day. By the way, the $1,500 per month was waived for the coaches. And I needed that since I was dead broke. Todd goes, no man, I'm good. I already have Kenny as an assistant and that's all I need. Again, obstacle, schmostacle. So I went to Kenny behind Todd's back. Hey bro, you need any help this weekend with like filming and stuff? You see the assistants are in charge of doing hidden camera footage of the club pickups so instructors can sell courses with infield content. I do need a camera wingman. That could be helpful. That's what Kenny said. And I had no idea what the hell that was. So I said, sure, bro, I'm damn good at that. So I booked a bus ticket, sat next to Kenny on the bus, and we went to San Diego. Todd took a flight. And uh, by the way, Todd had no idea. He had specifically told me not to come. Eh, whatever. Don't matter. I showed up to boot camp anyway, side by side with Kenny. Todd was there with three students in the hotel lobby, and uh, he saw me from the window and got up from his couch. And uh, Kenny went inside before me, and now I was walking alone. Todd comes up to me, puts his hand forward like this. What are you doing here? Um, Kenny really needed a camera wingman and requested that I go with him. He smiled back, and what he said next, I'll never forget. I like it. Better to ask forgiveness than to seek permission. He welcomed me inside, and we had a damn good boot camp. And from then on, I accompanied Todd to every boot camp, and a few months later, I became his main assistant. And I also assisted Owen, RSD Tyler, Julian, Alex, Max, Ozzy. Oh my God, so many stories. Maybe I'll tell you more in future videos. Like uh, the time when I took the camera from Kenny because he was too scared to film Todd f***ing a girl in this forbidden area at Surrender Nightclub upstairs. How I, uh, I literally took the camera from him and filmed the entire porno with Todd and the girl he picked up like five minutes before. Kenny was just too scared and I wasn't. And there were exciting moments in which I would literally run with the camera if a student physically picked up a girl and took her to his bedroom. Bro, I was willing to do anything and I did. And by the way, feel free to comment if you uh, want me to tell you more stories of these boot camps or Las Vegas immersion. It was the coolest and most unique experience of my life. We had uh, daily trainings on how to get out of our comfort zone or how to react to different social situations, do pickup lines and learn charisma and women's psychology, you name it. It was something like doing a postdoc in pussy. There were moments when I got into legal trouble. Like for example, this Norwegian guy, he f***ed some girl in the elevator and then he told the police that I was his caretaker. What the hell, man? And then I remember this Dutch dude he was in his 30s and still a virgin. And he felt guilty about getting a boner in salsa class. And his dad would call us like three times a day asking if his little boy was okay. And then there was that 40 year old virgin, legit. This bald guy from the UK, he got his first lay with this fat chick at some penthouse hotel room. <laughs> All my students were getting laid but not me. I was still a virgin at 31 years old. I was great at pickup. Could go up to any girl in any situation, pull her home, got blow some fingering action, but I could never put it inside her. I still had ED. My 
health was total crap. Eating junk food and seed oils, doing dumb workouts with no intensity, sleeping at 6, 7 a.m. every day, waking up at noon. But remember, I had asked the universe to get me good at pickup and attracting women, but I wasn't specific enough. I was getting the girls. They were ready to get nailed, but I couldn't get hard. Not even once. Not even with the super hot Jewish Spanish girl I picked up from Lush Cosmetics store. Not even with the blonde Lithuanian model who I pulled while I was filming a boot camp. I still remember how she was following me around in the club like a little puppy. And not even the Indian investment banker from New York who looked like a Brazilian supermodel. Failure after failure after failure. So when Yuri said I should become a doctor, I fully accepted it and asked the universe, my subconscious mind, to make me doc testosterone. And I became, it was that easy. I figured it out. I doubled my testosterone, both total and free T. I solved my bedroom performance issues. I married the girl of my dreams and we are planning to have a baby soon. Everything works out, even money. I now have one of the largest supplement companies in the world. I travel to all the exotic places and we live in a different city every month. My wife and I are living a life full of freedom and fulfillment, eating only organic food at whichever restaurant we choose. I even manifested this for my parents. They're also traveling the world. My mom went from 210 pounds to 175 pounds in a few months. I retired my mom and dad a couple of years ago so they can focus 100% on their health, both physical, mental, and spiritual. And that brings me to my final point. Health. That one night with Yuri at the Wynn Casino parking lot, we both realized something. Getting hot girls and success in life is not about how much you can manipulate women. Even the RSD instructors, 99% of the girls they slept with were not even sevens. Most were maybe six out of 10. So I realized during that year that there's more to fulfillment than just chasing women. The key to both love and wealth lies in health. So when I became Doc Testosterone, I made a promise to be the healthiest and fittest man in the world, physically, mentally, and spiritually. And today, thank God, I've transformed my body and helped so many men double or even triple their testosterone levels naturally. And now I am here at your service. Do you want to be amongst the guys who've transformed their health under my guidance? Remember, it's your decision, your choice. Either you continue to be amongst the 99% of guys who want their health back, but do nothing about it. Or you can fully accept and immerse yourself into a life of happiness and well-being. All you have to do is feel it. And remember, where did I come from? My didn't work at all. I was a skinny fat Pakistani Muslim kid whose parents didn't let him leave the house. A 31 year old virgin. I had no idea about how the real world works. A shy, introverted and depressed kid. And I became this by simply rewiring my brain to change my life. And if I can do it, so can you. I promise you that. All you have to do is embrace the fear and chaos and stop giving a f about what other people think. All that matters is what you feel inside your consciousness. You got this, bro. And I'm with you at every step of your journey. I love you and I will see you in the next video.